Hi, Dana here. Welcome back to Sew, Learn, Create. If you haven't done so, please subscribe to my channel and help it grow. Today's project is part of my Christmas in July series that are great projects for gifts, but also perfect for beginner sewing. Today's project is a fabric basket. They work great on a nightstand to hold your keys and loose change and make a really good gift for those dads and guys in our lives. So, let's get started. For today's project, the fabric basket, you'll only need three pieces of fabric and batting. Two fabric squares that are seven by seven and a batting piece that is seven by seven. I'm doing mine in coordinating fabrics because your basket is reversible, but you could do the same fabrics on both sides. It really doesn't matter. So to get started, we're going to take and lay our batting down first. Then we're going to take our first fabric. We're going to lay it right side up. Take our second fabric, lay it right side down. Then we're going to clip all the way around because when we go to the machine, we're going to stitch all the way around, leaving a hole, an opening at the bottom so we can turn. And remember to remember to remind to do my opening. I'm going to do my green clip on the left, my red clip on the right, and that is my opening that I'll use to turn. When we go to the machine, I'll show you the next step. Now we're at the machine and we're going to start stitching right here at our green clip. So I'm going to remove that. Always put your needle down and then we're going to stitch all the way around. Leave our needle down, lift and turn, and keep going. Remember, we're going to stop where our red clip was. Leaving that opening so we can turn our basket right side out. I'm going to clip my threads and I'm going to flip it over and make sure that I caught my batting in both of my fabrics. Then I'm going to stick my finger in between the two fabric pieces so I have fabric and batting on one side and fabric on the other. I don't want to put my finger in between the batting and the bottom fabric because then when I turn it right side out I'll have batting on one side and fabric and that's not what we want. So you want to put your finger between the two fabrics. Wiggle it down in there. Turn it right side out. Get our chopstick, putting our chopstick in between the batting and the fabric. I'm going to go and I'm going to gently push my corners out. And remember when you're pushing your corners, don't push too hard because you want to make sure you don't rip your stitching. One more. Sometimes it takes a little bit of adjusting because they don't want to poke out all the way. You just keep gently working on it and it'll eventually get there. Now I'm going to press it. So everything lays nice and flat. And when I'm pressing, I want to make sure that this opening 
my fabric is turned in so when we top stitch it will be closed up and look nice and neat. Now we're going to go back to the machine and we're going to just top stitch all the way around our square. And for this I'm going to use the inside of my foot because last time I used the outside and this will give me just a little bit narrower seam allowance and that will close up my opening nice and neat. When I lift and turn the last time, I'm going to go back over these stitches just a little bit to lock them in place. And I'm going to do a little bit of a back stitch. And I'm going to clip my threads. I always clip my threads as I go so that they don't get in my way. Next, you need to decide which part of your basket will have the points on the outside because when you reverse it your little points are on the inside of the basket so the fabric that you want to be on the bottom with the points facing out is what you need to decide so I think I'm going to use this check as my bottom so that when my basket is created with my points, you see this pat, this fabric that has the bear and the ducks on it. To create these corners, you're going to fold your, your square on the diagonal. You're going to take a pencil and a ruler and you're going to measure in Well, let me double check. Yeah. You're going to realize you're in from the point one inch and you're going to make a mark. So from that point, I'm going to measure in one inch and make a mark. And I always like to put a clip right there to hold that point in place. Then I'm going to turn it around and I'm going to do it on the opposite corner. Again, from the point, the very tip, I'm going to measure in one inch and make a line. And I'm going to put a little clip to kind of hold it in place. Then we're going to go to the machine and we're going to stitch across our line and that's going to create our point. Now we're back at the machine and so I'm going to remove my clip because I have my corner under my presser foot and my line is right here and I'm going to stitch right across that line and I want to go back and forth over that line two or three times to make it nice and secure. So I'm going to put my needle down. And I like to just Flip it rather than back stitch it makes it just a little bit easier. I'm going to leave my needle down and I'm going to flip it and sew it one more time. I'm going to clip my threads. And I'm going to turn around and do this corner. Put it under my presser foot. Oops. 
try not to unthread your machine. Needle down, gonna flip it around, reach across, flip it, go back one more time. And then I am gonna back stitch here to lock my stitches. Gonna clip my threads. Maybe. I'm going to get my other two corners done and then I'll show you how to finish it. Now I've stitched all four of my corners and basically our project is complete. If you'll notice, my original one is larger than the one with the seven inch squares. The original was made with an eight inch square. So it comes out a little longer, bigger, but with shorter sides and is great for um, a bigger table or something. But this size really works well on a nightstand for loose change, car keys, something like that. The other thing is you can leave your points pointed kind of straight out or you can take them and press them with your finger or even your iron and just kind of make that point come to this section of your uh, basket and it gives them kind of a different look. So I've kind of pressed all mine in a little bit just to kind of give them a little fancy look. Then if you want to reverse it, you just simply take it, flip it, flatten out your edges, and then you can have your, your little points pointing in towards the center or you can kind of push them to the side, whichever you prefer. I kind of like the look of the points out with the little fancy fold here. And they're great for even on your sewing table, for your, bind, your binder clips, they work great to keep them corralled. If you've liked this project, please give it a thumbs up. And if you make one, I would love for you to comment and send me a picture in the comments so we can all share in what your creation looks like. Be sure to subscribe to Sew, Learn, Create and I'll see you in the next video.